Hello everyone, my name is Molly Mayfield. I'm a support specialist here at Rockware. Thank you for joining us today. This webinar expands on the presentation from December in which we reviewed the menus in which block or solid models can be created and some of the modeling options you can apply both during model in interpolation and after. In this session we'll very quickly review the concept of a block model and then we'll jump directly to the problem. Today's problem addresses how to model intrusive dikes in an otherwise layered stratigraphic environment. We will touch on the comparison of surface-based stratigraphy models versus voxel-based block models and using oriented fracture data to model the dikes. The block model display of the dikes can very simply be appended to the display of the stratigraphy model just by appending the rock plot 3D scenes. Or we can integrate the dikes into a block stratigraphy model using the solid model grid filters, Boolean filters, and host donor node replacement filters. So first some definitions. A solid or block model is a three-dimensional grid of nodes at regularly spaced XYZ locations generated to the extents of the output or model dimensions you've established in Rockworks. We use the term block model and solid model interchangeably. Each node is assigned a G value which might represent contaminant concentrations, geophysical measurements, lithology, colors, and so on. This G value is interpolated from the project data using one of the available modeling methods. In Rockworks, the block model is stored in an RWMOD file, which just contains numbers, the listing of the XYZ points and the G values. You can visualize the numbers or data stored in the block model in a variety of ways. Color-coded voxels, isosurfaces, horizontal or planned slices through the model at specific elevations, vertical cross-section slices, and so on. The block model nodes always occupy the full 3D space of the project, though you can null out nodes which lie above ground, below a surface, outside a polygon, and so on, to render them invisible and remove them from volume calculations. We'll illustrate this in our example today. Rockworks offers block or solid modeling of a variety of different data types. You can create block models in the Borehole Manager for quantitative data via the iData, tData, and pData menus. You can also generate block models to represent lithologic data, fracture proximities, colors, and caverns. We'll be demonstrating the fracture modeling in the example today. In the utilities portion of the program, you can generate block models from XYZG points listed in the data sheet, which represent point XYZ locations in a measured G value of some kind. And you can even create a block model from raster images. In Rockworks, the Solid Modeling Options window offers a number of choices for controlling how your block models are generated, from choosing the modeling method or algorithm and adjusting those settings, to, a, to applying smoothing, filtering, and other constraints on the model as it's being interpolated, and we reviewed these briefly in the previous webinar. So, let's look at a specific problem. This example deals with how to model intrusive dikes with otherwise layered stratigraphy. Here's how the stratigraphy logs look. The main layers are an upper laterite shown in orange, a narrow weathered rock layer in yellow, and a bedrock in pink. The dikes are shown in blue. The problem is that Rockworks requires that stratigraphy units be consistent in order throughout the project, and they cannot repeat because they're modeled using surfaces. Here the dikes intersect the pink nice unit separately along the east and west edges of the project. Stratigraphic surfaces are also interpolated across the entire extent of the project and we want to restrict these to their localities. 
And finally, while we could enter these materials as lithology, as we discussed in the previous webinar, we also want to be able to illustrate the orientation of these intrusive bodies. The solution we came up with is to enter the dike contacts downhole as oriented fractures. And here's how the fractures look when displayed in 3D. You can see their orientation. And this view shows how we've entered the extents or radius and thickness or aperture for the fractures. Let's jump to the program for a minute to look at how the data was entered. So here are the stratigraphic intervals for some of the holes. You can see the layered the stratigraphy. And then here's where this dike intersects this bedrock layer. So for those two contact depths, we entered the, the fracture context here with the depth, the direction, the angle, the radius, and the aperture. In this example, Again, the three stratigraphic layers, and here's the dike intersect intersecting the gneiss. And at those depth contacts, we entered the fracture information. So the first step here is to create a, create a stratigraphy model for the non-intrusive layers only. Rockworks 16 offers the ability to model only selected units without having to remove any of the data you have entered. You do so simply by unchecking the units in the stratigraphy types table. Then use the stratigraphy model program to create the model of the layers. Uh, there are a couple of very important settings here. Be sure to tell the program you only want to model the units with their show in legend box checked. Be sure to tell the program to save a block model version of the stratigraphy model. We'll use this shortly. And in this example, I decided to use a base plate in the model since the borehole stops short of the base of the gneiss. This way, the lower gneiss surface will simply comply with the base of the project. For reference, here's what the block model version of the stratigraphy model looks like. In creating this blocky version of the surfaces, Rockworks simply initializes a blank solid model to the extents of the output dimensions. It then assigns the nodes between the top and base surface of each unit the value defined for that unit in the stratigraphy types table. So the block model nodes between the top and base surface of the laterite unit will be assigned a value of 1. The nodes between the top and base surface of the weathered rock unit will be assigned a value of 2, and the nodes between the top and the base of the gneiss a value of 3. With both the surface-based stratigraphic model and block model version now saved, we go to the Fractures model menu to create a block model of the oriented fractures. And there's a setting to note here we want the model to represent distance to closest fracture and not fracture intersection, which creates valuable models but is not what we want here. Here's how the resulting model looks. We have accessed the fracture model options by double clicking here and turned on a value filter to see only those nodes within 30 meters of the fractures. So here are our dikes. Now, let's constrain this fracture model with the uppermost stratigraphic grid model so that the block model doesn't stick up above the ground. This is done in the utilities portion of Rockworks in the Solid, Filters, Grid Filters menu. And here are the settings. We spe simply specify the fracture model as the input model, the top of the laterite as the clipping grid, and assign a new name. And here we just say that we want to null out the, the nodes that lie above that grid. And here's the resulting model, again with the display filtered from, for nodes from 0 to 30 meters from the fracture. It looks almost identical to the previous, except now that the nodes above the ground surface are invisible. Now that we have the stratigraphy model completed and the fracture model completed, at its simplest we can just append one 3D scene to another to view the intrusives represented by the voxels inside the stratigraphic layers represented by surfaces. 
And this works great, but if we want to compute volumes of materials or generate cross-sections with the dikes displayed, another option is to merge the fracture model with the block model version of the stratigraphy model. The first step on this journey is to create a Boolean or true-false model of the clipped fracture model for only those nodes within 30 meters of the fractures. This is done in the utilities in the solid Boolean operations Boolean conversion menu. This program simply reads a block model and assigns nodes a user declared value depending on whether the nodes are within or not within a specified G value range. For this example, we will input the clipped fracture model and assign a new output file name. We will tell Rockworks that the node range we were interested in is 0 to 30, and these represent the nodes in the fracture model that lie within 30 meters of the fractures, representing the dikes. And here we tell Rockworks what the true and false nodes are to be assigned. Boolean models are typically assigned a value of 1 for true and 0 for false, but here we'll do this slightly differently. We'll set the true nodes, meaning the nodes with the values from 0 to 30, a new value of 4. Why 4? Well, that's the value assigned to one of the dikes in the stratigraphy types table. And we'll assign all false nodes, for those nodes outside the 0 to 30 range, a value of 0. And here's what the Boolean or true-false model looks like, just for reference. And it's just using default colors for the true-false nodes. Now, here's the cool part. We will merge this model, the Boolean fracture model, into the block stratigraphy model, which will be the host. We'll do this via the Utilities, Solid, Filters, Replacement Filter menu. Here are the replacement options. We tell Rockworks that the stratigraphy solid is the host model. It will absorb parts of the donor model, which is the Boolean fracture model. Here we assign an output file name. And here we define that we want to replace the host voxels with donor voxels that have a value of 4. This corresponds to the true value in the Boolean model. And here's the result. Selected locations within the host stratigraphy solid have been replaced by the nodes in the Boolean model, which represent the dikes. And here is a view of some slices inserted into the resulting block model. From here you could generate other types of diagrams, compute volumes of the materials, filter the display to show selected voxels, and so on. And this completes our presentation. Uh, just a reminder that our next Rockworks workshop, which will be held here in Golden, is scheduled for next month and we still have seats available. Also, please keep in mind that we're always available to schedule custom online training sessions. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and stay tuned for our next webinar.